Well, welcome back. We have Mike Burns on the phone right now. Mike is a Massachusetts native. He received the honor of Massachusetts High School Soccer Player of the Year in 1987 and 1995. He was also assigned to play for the New England Revolution and has played on two all-star soccer teams. Mike now serves as the director of soccer for the Rebs. Mike, it's a pleasure to have you on the show with us. How you doing? Hey guys, how are you? You make me feel real old when you talk about when I was in high school in 1987. Hey, well, you know, it's a great honor to have, but let's start out talking a little bit about soccer this year in New England and in the world, starting out with the World Cup coming up on June 11th. Having played on the, on the U.S. national team, guys like Landon Donovan, Clint Dempsey, is this the strongest national U.S. team of, of all time, or do they have the best chance ever of winning the World Cup this year? Um, it's hard to say if it's the best U.S. team of all time. I think that's hard um, to say. I mean, in Mike, my you there? opinion. Sorry. Oh, okay. I just couldn't hear you for a minute. What were you saying? No, no. I think I, I think it's hard to say if it's the best U.S. team of all time. Um, what I will say is that, in my opinion, I think they have the best player um, that's ever played for the U.S. thus far in Landon. I mean, I think. You know, he's 28 years old. He, he's already the leading goal scorer in, in U.S. soccer history for the national team. I mean, he, he, the, I think the percentage is something like 70 or 75 percent of goals in world is a remarkable statistic. Um, so I think there's a lot of pressure on him whether he wants to admit it or not. I think, I, I think kind of, the success may go hand in hand with how he plays. Um, having said all that, they certainly have some other guys that have to have good World Cups, and Timmy Howard, Clint Dempsey, I think Altidori has to be solid up top. Um, I think they have, and they collectively as a team have to play well, but their key guys have to step up as well. All right, well, let's talk for a minute real quick about uh, the U.S. defensive lines. Uh, in, in former years, it's been really just this long kick style of defense instead of the real nimble kind of bringing it up and trying to gain that possession effectively. Uh, how do you see them working things on the defensive side this World Cup? I think they have a mix. I think they have a, a mix of guys that can play a little bit, and they get, a, they get some obviously some strength back there. I mean, I think they have some great leadership in Bocanegra, um, who's a veteran who I think all the guys on the team respect um, for what he brings on and off the field. I think the question mark is, is, Gooch is, is uh, Gooch's fitness level. He's coming off an injury, and I think if he were, hadn't previously been injured, I think he's a, a vital cog back there, so it remains to be seen if how fit or how close to 100% he is, or if uh, maybe it gives an opportunity to a Clarence Goodson. And then at, at right back, you obviously have some experience in Chirondolo. I hope will be a calming influence if he sees some time. And then you have, a, you know, on the left-hand side, so it remains to be seen whether Cloak and I will play in the middle or play out wide, or if it gives someone with a little less experience, like a Jonathan Bornstein, an opportunity to play. So I definitely think there's some question marks that are going to have to be addressed. Um, but I think in the game against Australia tomorrow, I would think that you're going to see uh, uh, Coach Bradley play play the team uh, at least for a portion of the game that he anticipates to start against England on the 12th. So, Mike, um, talk about USA's chances. Do you think USA can win the World Cup, and if not, who do you think will win? Well, I'm biased, obviously, so I'm going to say the U.S. can win the World Cup. So let me just say that. If, if they don't win the World Cup, though, I think it's, it's impossible not to go with some of the teams that everyone's been talking about. I think, I think you have to put Spain, you have to put Brazil, you have to put Argentina um, right up there at a team to beat. I mean, obviously, England has a good team, Germany, Holland, Portugal, um, Italy. And so there's another a group of, of teams I think I, I play as kind of a, a, a 1A and a 1B. Um, but, you know, that's what makes the World Cup so exciting. I think you'll also have a team that kind of emerges and makes a good run in the World Cup that no one's really talking about right now. You also have a player that, that, that emerges. It always seems to happen. There's always stories that come out of it. But it's so hard to look beyond the favorites. Um, and, and, you know, it, it's, uh, I would be surprised if some of those teams like Spain, Brazil, or Argentina are outstanding there at the end. Once again, this is Backshop Entertainment. We're talking to Mike Burns, former U.S. national team player and current director of soccer operations for the New England Revolution. Mike, starting off on the 12th against England, what a match. How crucial is this for Team USA? 
Well, I mean, it's, you know, it's a round robin tournament, so it doesn't, it's, you know, it doesn't, it's not all, it doesn't, I don't want to say it doesn't matter if you win or lose. Every, every team in the tournament wants to get off to a good start. Where I think is, is a little more, I don't want to say more important than the result, but, but my guess is, and I don't have a crystal ball here, that it's probably going to be the most watched soccer game in U.S. soccer history. So I think the fact that they're playing England, they're playing England the first game, there's so much hype and so much talk about this game. I think it's crucial from, from not only from an American standpoint, but from a worldwide audience standpoint, that the U.S. play well and it's competitive. And if for some reason we can get a draw or a win, even, you know, it, 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 I think as a soccer nation, the result of that game matters a lot more to the U.S. than it probably does for England in terms of the growth of the sport. So, Mike, um, you're, you're also the president of the New England Revolution. Um, so, with your injured goalie, um, Preston Burpo, um, how how do you think you how do you think the New England Revolution can deal with that type of injury? Well, it was a horrific injury to Preston, and we wish him obviously the best um, in terms of his recovery. But um, Matt Reese, uh, who was who was injured, he is now just coming off our injured uh, reserve list. So um, while we lost Preston for the remainder of the year, we're getting Matt back. And we play tomorrow in Seattle, and then we don't play another league game until June 27th, so we anticipate Matt Reese to be back by then. Now, uh, do you think it was the worst injury in Rev's history, what happened to Preston's leg? I think, um, I think you know, I've seen a lot of soccer games, and, and I, I, you know, I, it was, to, to see that firsthand um, was, was probably as horrific soccer injury as that, unfortunately, that I've had to see. Um, and you just you instantly knew that it wasn't your normal soccer injury, um, just the way that, that our players reacted, the way that New York reacted, um, and you just you felt awful. It was just it was it, and that's what it was. It wasn't accident. I mean, it wasn't intentional. Um, it was a 50-50 ball that just he and Dane Mitchell and they were both trying to play the ball, and it was just you hate to say it, but it was just one of those things. And it was uh, you don't wish that uh, upon anyone. So as I said, we wish Preston uh, a speedy and full recovery. And um, but it wasn't it wasn't good for anyone to have to see that. Let's talk. So Mike, you said um, that your prediction was the U.S. would win the World Cup. If that happens, who will be their opponent in the final two in, of the World Cup? Who will what? Who will be the final? T who will face them in the finals of the World Cup? Uh, I, I don't know. That's too hard to predict. As I said earlier, I think Spain, Brazil, um, you know, Spain, Brazil, Argentina, Italy, Germany, you know, any of those, any of the, you know, quote unquote big boys, uh, I think will be there at the end. Do you see any underdogs per se, like for example, Nigeria, uh, Belarus, uh, any of those teams strike you as, uh, you know, a possibility to make it into those uh, later rounds? Yeah, I think I think uh, I think usually you know the African nations don't get a lot of publicity, but I think uh, I think one of the African nations could emerge. Um, I think obviously that would make a tremendous story considering South Africa's hosting. Um, I think uh, you know a team like a Serbia that most people don't know a lot about um, could potentially do well. Um, Holland is traditionally very strong. Portugal. Um, but I think that's what makes it fun. I mean, it's almost like the it's almost like March Madness with basketball. I mean, you love to see that Cinderella story, and then hopefully there'll be be a country that not a lot of people are talking about emerges because it, it just makes it it makes it that much more entertaining to watch. Well, real quick, Mike, just before we wrap this up, we want to thank you again for being on. Um, what's the latest on the standalone soccer facility in New England? I mean, we're, we're obviously hopeful and optimistic at some point that that will be the case. But um, I mean, you know, we're, we're still um, th there's nothing to report at this time um, on that. And um, you know, and our, but our guys enjoy playing at Gillette Stadium, and, and we feel like we have a great fan base and and support there. And um, but uh, for sure, every player you know would love to be playing in a soccer only stadium. Okay, well, Mike, uh, best, of luck to, best of luck to the Revolution as they uh, get set to play Seattle coming up here. And we want to thank you uh, ten times over for being on the show. We really enjoyed talking to you. Uh, so thanks a lot, Mike. All right, guys. Take care. All right, well, that about does it for us. For
for everyone at YBA and Backtalk, thanks for uh, viewing. And don't forget to check out Sunday's episode uh, here on Young Broadcasters. Dot com. Thanks and enjoy your weekends and forget, go, don't forget, go Celtics. <laughs>